Twitter. <laughs> um, thank you for joining us today. Thank you for having us. My name is Nema. Barrett, Anita. Okay. Nice to see you. Let's get started. So, tell me what your partner would be as an animal and why. Bear. Yay! You got it. I'm a bear. He is. And that's it's even in my name. Yes, he's. I was um, like. I was like, like babe, how, how, like, I literally carry it around in my name. Um, just for context, we had tried to take one of this and I accused him of being an, an, an okra, which turned out to be okra. And Ork, then, orca. Orca. Still, still not getting killer it. Whale. Killer just whale. Just a killer whale. You can say killer whale. <laughs> then I tried the blue whale. No, it wasn't the one. Then, um, great. Anyway, so it's a bear. Um, and why I, do I like bears? Because uh, they're very cuddly like you. Partially true. Not that cuddly if you've ever seen them, but yes. <laughs> why do you like bears? Um, I not I don't remember why he likes bears, but I do remember that bears are your favorite animal. But then the one which I had said um, I would put you as was an elephant because you're very protective of your pack. You're very family oriented. You have incredible memory and you just, you have a presence to you that you can just walk into anywhere and it just you know you have a presence to you mm. and i feel like elephants have that too all right for you i've decided i'm gonna go with chinchilla i'm really waiting to see where this goes mm -hmm. a chinchilla is the softest animal and they have a very nice coat so they are cuddly okay unlike a bear <laughs> which is not actually very right. cuddly um, i'm aware but then they just Cartoon-wise, they look cute. And chinchillas have this very, like, mysterious, you know, kind of elusive nature, uh -huh. you know? And I feel like you, as you jet set and go over, all over the world, you always have this, like, mystery about you, much like the chinchilla. Okay. I would have gone with dog. <laughs> <laughs> that I've been begging for, for years. Um, and that's because I think they're just very friendly and very loyal and you know they're they're good to those who are good to them you know and um and even when you're not they really do try to get you to see how good they are. so yeah in many ways i think i'm like a puppy i can see the puppiness a little less mysterious than the chinchilla <laughs> but i agree okay <laughs> those your favorite animals his is bear mine's dogs okay so Tell me about yourselves. Tell about each other or about ourselves? No, about each other. Okay. You Tell us about yourselves. Describe ourselves. Yeah. Okay. Like I describe Barrett, Barrett describes me. Okay, cool. Um, so Barrett is an insanely intelligent human being, extremely handsome, super cuddly. Um, he's very friendly, very loyal. Um, I've always said this, one of the things that I love the most about him is just how big a heart he has, where he goes above and beyond in his life and his work to do things for others, to do things for people that he cares about, even people he's just met, you know. Um, he really does, the way they normally say, um, leave the world a better place, I'm very sure he will, because everything he does is in that trajectory. Um, he's very, he's just the greatest dad ever. Him and Kaya together this is the cutest thing. Um, and then he always pushes everybody in his circle and everyone around him to be better in everything that they do. Um, and he's a great cook, master omelette maker. Um, and he's the love of my life. Okay, well, great. I love you. I love you too. That was a lot of compliments in a row. I was. Oh, uh, he, he can hold a grudge. Okay, there we go. You can, yeah, round me out a little yes, bit. Yes, you know, just he can, he can really hold a grudge. You you do not want to get on Barrett's bad side. Um, and then, what is is there anything else? Um, but I think it's just a normal thing for we're very different in our communication styles. Where when when something bothers me, I want to address it immediately, and Barrett wants to sit with it and process. My therapist says that's a good thing, so I'm sure it is. Um, but then I'm just like, let's get on this now. Um, but I think that's, if I'm to round you out, I think, to me, that's a bad thing, but to him, that's, in general, that's a great thing, actually. You need to sit down, process, think through what you're going to say, and then say it. Don't come in guns blazing like I do. So I just say it's the holding a grudge thing. That's probably we'll the do, only... I do Scorpio energy. Yeah. Um. <laughs> um. So Anita is a creative, artistic gregarious, introvert, 
And so she expresses herself quite a bit, but then recharges alone. And she's a peacemaker by nature, so she avoids conflict. I'd say to round it out sometimes a little too much <laughs> avoiding of conflict. As much as she says she jumps in guns blazing, every now and then I, I don't hear the shots fired, <laughs> even when there would be a good case for self-defense. Yeah. Um, I think Anita is a natural kind of, how would I say it? She's one of the people that holds crews together. And so when you think about, you know, everyone has the friend that's tending everyone in the crew. You know, I, I think, how to say it, there's a, in every relationship, there's the people that call and then the people that get called, you know? And like, uh, some people just aren't the one to pick up the phone as much as others. And the, Anita's a phone picker upper. <laughs> and so, you know, I think in all of her different social scenes, both her like of, of peace and her willingness to pick up the phone and hit people up makes it so she's really important in her social fabrics. Um, she's very family oriented like me, which is one of the things I think we get along very well about. She checks in on her parents. We see them really often. We're just not distant from any of the relatives. And she's a great mom. I was like, God, this Bad is taking word. forever to come hey, through. Save the best okay. for last. Okay. It's Parent okay. Magazine. I wasn't going <laughs> to just jump on the parenting thing right off front. It was kind of a gimme. I would say when I look at Anita and Kaya's relationship clearly mom's number one you know and so we got we she's got a lot of support network but no one can replace mom and uh and yeah and then as a wife you know i'd say anita is very like like i said our communication styles are a little different i think i at a communication style i'm a little more conflict i'm more open to conflict uh, where Anita does have her emotions that she needs to express, but then isn't so much into argumentation as me. And so I think I argue a bit more, but I enjoy those arguments because that's how I communicate, where I think Anita doesn't like arguments as much because they feel aggressive. And I love you. I love you. Te amo mucho. Te amo mucho. Nakupenda. Oh. Okay, that's beautiful. So, tell me um, about your childhood and mm. how your childhoods have informed your lives now. Do we talk about each other or ourselves? No, just yourself. Just okay. ourselves. Okay, good. Should I go first? Yeah. Okay. So, I had a really good childhood, and it was mostly because of a very unusual family structure that I had. And so, I was raised by not only my biological parents, but another set of parents that were not related to them at all. And so they were my neighbors and they were Peruvian. And so we spoke Spanish in the house and we, they had a very different culture than my Irish American biological parents. And I think in a lot of ways, that's what broke me out of the normal American cultural life is because I would go to Peru with them and I'd be the only white guy in the village and there'd be no power, and there'd be so many things that remind me of shags in Kenya. And so I got very used to that, you know, just kind of it, like when I first came to Kenya, it felt nostalgic to going to Latin America. You know, now they say Mzungu, then they said Gringo, but otherwise same difference. <laughs> and, uh, and so I think that really helped shape my whole life trajectory, was that multicultural upbringing and getting outside of America very young. And... Um, and also not having a nuclear family, right? Like I had two women I called mom, I had two men I called dad. They were neighbors, they knew each other very well. It wasn't like weird or awkward for anyone. And so I think that really helped me. Um, you know, I, I joke that in America, a lot of people are raised by the TV because a lot of parents work, right? We have double, we have a culture that both parents work all the time. And, uh, and so because of my Peruvian family, I got raised by my Peruvian mom, Catalina. And Catalina actually made it into our daughter's name as, a, as, as an ode to my Peruvian mom because she was so influential in my life. So I love all my, four of my parents. My, my biological parents are named Jim and Mary, and my Peruvian parents are named Cata and Juan, Catalina and Juan. And, and they really all shaped my childhood and made me who I am today. Um, 
This is super sweet. I really wish I could my cousin one. His parents are great. Are just the best in-laws you could possibly ever ask for. Um, so I was raised in Eldorado by um, Josephine Deru and Mr. Papius Lewis Deru. And so we grew up on a farm. I grew up with two brothers and a younger sister. Um, our childhood was pretty fun because it was back in the 90s in Eldorado. There was there wasn't much going on in terms of technology, so we were outdoor children and we were constantly out learning something, doing something, and it just created a certain level of creativity in us as a kid. Um, but as we grew older, I truly enjoy my solitude in ways that I don't think being if if I got. I don't know how to explain it. I'm. I really enjoy my own company, and as a result, the way Barrett was saying that I recharge on my own. Um, I think growing up, consistently trying to find ways to entertain yourself and entertain your siblings is um, one of the things that taught me to enjoy my own company. Um, but then also through growing up with um, my siblings, were very different in nature and just. We're very different. When you hang out with all of us, we're just extremely different people. Um, I, I, I kind of learned how to um, not just not share per se, but how to deal with different personalities in a way where I accept you for exactly how you are, and then consistently try and focus on the good bits because we're also different in many ways, and we're we're not good or bad people. We just have different ways in which we operate and. Um, so I think just growing up in that element was great in terms of shaping who I am now. Um, and I would say because we grew up, there was always someone in our home. Always. There was always a cousin, an auntie, an uncle. So we, all, we, we always grew up taking care of someone. And as a result, I think even in our, uh, in our family structure now and in my adult life now, I never, I love taking care of people and, not, and I never feel... I never feel weird when it's like, oh, we need to take care of so and so, or we need to, you know, be with so and so, and da 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 da. Because I'm just used to having people, both family and non-family, around all the time. So I was, we raised, we we raised villages, and we were raised by a village. So I'm always happy to be a part of the village raising system. Oh, Bart, mucho gusto en conocer. Oh, un placer. Okay, so in ways you both have come from multicultural backgrounds. Yeah. So has it been easy then to raise a multicultural family? I mean, I was just the one kid. So it's it's not been it's not been that there hasn't been mu much complexity to that. I think we're still just trying to navigate the first 2 years of having a rent-free housemate. Um and just, you know, um learning on the job and then just applying both both aspects of what I think that what the one thing I will say is that the the there's in every person's upbringing there's certain characteristics be it in your parents or yourself that as 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 parents we've just agree, we just like we talk about it a lot and we're like this and this part of our nature should not make it to our parenting skill because we want it to end with us in terms of this kind of behavior um be it the way I was I was terrible at communication the second there was just the second marriage would say can I talk to you I am looking for the fastest route out of the house but then now I'm learning to be better at communication which is something which we want our daughter to be very good at be it in comfortable communication or comfortable communication just or topics rather um and I would say I think what I would say it's just we we we're trying to pick the good in in our childhood to bring into our child's life and and um through therapy and communication outgrow the aspects of our childhood that we're not a very big fan of so that we don't bring that into our child's life so what did you guys study i did business economics and i did 2 years at the university of california at santa barbara so in southern california and then i ended up going to my last years in canada So I went to the University of British Columbia in Vancouver, Canada, which was um, yeah really kind of changed. You know, my first two years I was mostly in general ed, and so it's just you know kind of getting through. And then in the second two years, I really studied sustainability stuff. And so although it was under the business school, I really focused on sustainability-driven businesses, green businesses, and and now I've been running those for for many years. So I feel that was cool. I 
when I was in college, I knew I didn't know what I wanted to do, but I knew it would be a business. And so I figured that if I just had the business skills, then I could apply them to whatever content I ever I ended up latching onto, which ended up being solar power, although I didn't go to, to college for engineering. Cool. So um, I went, to, I studied international business administration at USIU, but then from a very early age, I knew I wanted to be in, um, I wanted to do mass comm or just practice journalism. So I wouldn't say it was a course I was particularly interested in. Um, and the second I got a chance to actually partake in um, actively working in a field that I love, which is media, I quickly shifted to that. So, are you doing what you study now? Uh, I think the certain elements of what we learned that we apply in what we do now, but then um, in many ways mine has um, probably like 5% to do with what I do now. Yeah, I mean, I would say that I do business things still, but the actual stuff we were taught in college I don't use very much. Right. And so maybe from a name perspective, like I went to study business and now I own and run a business. But, you know, like in college, they teach you a lot of like academic stuff that doesn't really apply. Right. And so, like, have I ever calculated supply and demand? Like, of course not. Like, who does that? <laughs> you know, and so uh, yes and no, all at the same time. Yes, I do business. No, I don't use my college classes that much. Hmm. Anita is good at dismantling and repairing things. And so she's very much more crafty than you would expect, especially around technological things. Like if the remote's not working or <laughs> something in the house needs to <laughs> the get... The is easy to repair. You just put the batteries back. Okay. I was just using a common <laughs> example of a device that you repair frequently, especially in the era of Kai. Um, but yeah, Anita will take things apart and and mess with them and trying to get them back to working and so there's very much uh, her, her dad's an auto mechanic so i know where it comes from but it doesn't match necessarily the high fashion you know when when she's in there with the I screwdriver and with stuff my overdressed gowns and i'm just like yeah let's fix this baby bretza <laughs> but she's very mechanical I mean, I really do enjoy tearing, tearing things apart and putting them back together. Um, my dad was a mechanic, still is, and he's, um, I watched him dismantle cars from like all the way down to like all the parts are everywhere. Then he built the car back together and I find that very incredible. Um, and I think it just, um, so there's that, what would I say Barrett's secret skill is? Um, let me think, let me think. He is, I, 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 I is it a, I think it is a skill. He's very good at plants. Like he knows <laughs> how we literally have our own garden and we live in an apartment. He found he like he I've seen him he, and he'll say, "Oh, this is the composition of how the plant should be for this to work." I didn't know that rabbit pea is a great first, um what's it called? insect repellent as opposed to using the toxic stuff that people use. Um will get soil and then he'll tell you about why the composition of that soil is different from the composition of a different soil. Um, what's this? Uh, he, ha he has a warm bin. I didn't even know that you could um, you could have a warm bin and then just put all your compost there and then I call it warm pea, but it's basically the liquids that accumulate at the bottom of a warm bin that you can then use and it's an incredible fertilizer. So he is great at, he'll make a great farmer and it is our hope to have our own ranch at some point and just live the farm life as we retire. So I'm confident we will live farm to fork because he know. oh, oh my gosh, and guys, this man can survive an apocalypse. He has studied and played every video game associated with how you can survive an apocalypse. I'm confident we will live through <laughs> one. <laughs> wow. Um, what are your favorite shows? Shows. 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 Sci-fi, apocalypse, end of the world, everything. <laughs> That's his research, I would say. Yeah. Anita is crime shows and like Desperate Housewives. You know what I mean? Like No. I only watch two of those and that's because I know the characters in there. But I'm saying like when I look at your range, it's like you go from like hardcore criminal stuff <laughs> to kind of like mindless 
like whatever, like, you know, Kardashian, Desperate Housewives, like this, like this kind of like whatever that type of drama is, you know? So you, you kind of binge, you're either like hardcore criminal or like women arguing with each other. So first of all, I hate <laughs> shows where women argue with each other. Um, I'm sure The Kardashians is a great show, but um, I'm not a fan. Um, I do love their fashion. I follow them on so social media and all of that. Um, the two shows that he's referring to is, um, should I, would I call them local? Would be like, like it's, it's, it's certain reality shows where I actually know the people on them and that's why I watch them. But generally, and not a fan. I hate shows where women. But I hate shows where people argue. I, in reality, I hate reality shows because I don't understand why you would put people together to argue. Like it makes me anxious. Even talking about it right now, I'm getting anxious. My favorite shows are mindless animation comedies. Those are my. I can sit and binge watch Family Guy from sunup to sundown. I've watched Friends over and over and over again. It's not an animation, but it's comedy. So I would say. But I would say those are background shows. Like you like those shows because you can put them on like when you're in that house and not pay attention. But they don't capture your attention. They're just kind of ambient noise. So my capture the attention is definitely crime shows. Crime shows are top. Those are my favorite shows to watch, favorite podcasts to listen to. Um, but yeah, definitely. Remember, remember how she said a minute ago, I will survive the apocalypse. I won't survive whatever's coming from Anita based on the media <laughs> that she consumes. Because... <laughs> She's been really studying these murderers. Um, I, I kind of just like to understand the psychology behind these things. Um, but yeah, so I would definitely say crime shows and comedies hate reality shows. Hate. Noted. So what's the best crime show? This is pay with me. I was going to be judged for watching that too. Huh? What's the best crime show? Um, the one that we're watching now is about this lady. I can't remember her name. Um, but it's on Netflix, um, and it's about this lady who used to assist her husband, who was this prolific serial killer, and her and her part in it. Um, that's the one we're currently watching. But then um, I I can't say what my favorite one is because I've watched so many. But what I can say I don't like are the ones where you don't solve the crime or the person who's disappeared is never found. Like I want to know what happened, you know? Um, these ones of like, and she was never seen again. I. Why am I watching this, you know? Um, but yeah, I think we have really focused on my love of crime shows. I think we should move on. Um, in the court of law, this would not stand well, so. <laughs> I just wanted this on tape, you know, in case there's ever future <laughs> evidence that's needed. I would never kill you, only with love. And what's your favorite show? Fantasy, Me. The Last of Us was nice. Yeah, Last of Us is very my type of vibes. Um, you know, I like... I mean, obviously, Game of Thrones was like seminal. House of the Dragon is great. Um, yeah, like you know, I'm, I'm kind of fantasy and sci-fi. You know, I like, I like that stuff. And then, and then, yeah, I mean, a little bit of. I mean, I like the mindless stuff too. When it's like you're falling Shits asleep. Shit's Creek was our Ooh, Shit's Creek. We Shits love Shit's Creek. Creek. Yeah, Shit's Creek was one of the greatest shows. We're not swearing. That's literally the name of the show. No, yeah, yeah. no, yeah. but one of the greatest shows in modern history is Shit's yes. Creek. Yeah. Okay. Um, so Anita. You, for a long time, you had a career in media, and then you left it, you resigned. Yes. So, what informed that decision, and how has the transition been from media to content creation? Um, well, several things. I think I shared this in the newspaper article as well. Um, it's just, first of all, I've been there for a long time. You know, it's, um, a decade is a long time to be doing the same thing. Um, and that was one of the things that informed the decision. Number two, digital content creation was becoming a really lucrative business in um, Kenya. And um, I was grateful enough to have the kind of numbers to allow me to make a business out of it. So that was also a very big decision um, in the it's kind of like, I, 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 what's the word I'm looking for? It, it was a great motivator, you know? Um, and then also, um, last but not least, I think it's just a difference in values and beliefs in traditional media and digital content creation where you can openly express your views and beliefs um, without the fear of repercussions. Um, um, and, you know, at, at some point, you know, you just uh, you have to do what sets your soul on fire. And um, um, I think digital content creation does that for me. And as much as, as Barrett said, it is true. I'm quite the introvert. There's something about the camera. When it goes on, I come alive and 
I just enjoy doing that on my own terms. Do you think um, legacy media, particularly in Kenya, has fully really understood and embraced the power of social media and digital platforms? I'd say it's getting there. Um, I remember a time when there was an uphill climb and an uphill struggle, um, but then I would say it's getting there. And then I think even more, more and more now, um, a lot of traditional media is moving to digital media. Um, so yeah, I would say we're, we're getting to the peak and it's very exciting. So people normally think content creation is a very easy thing. Yeah. You just go for the camera and shoot or whatever. So what are some challenges um, content creators go through that we consumers don't? I think my husband sees all of the content creation struggles because there's never been a day when we've said we're shooting from 2 to 4 and the shoot ends at 4. Maybe 4 a.m. <laughs> but it will not end at 4. Um, so I, there's so many things. Um, I think the, the one is, first of all, oh, where do we even begin? Um, one of the things I always say is it's not about the megapixels, it's about your personality. Um, every time people say, oh, I need a better camera, I need a better this in order to do this, you can shoot with what you have. And I promise we care more about what you're saying and how you're being and what you're sharing with us than we do about the megapixels of your camera. Um, and then what I would say is a challenge is sometimes you will express yourself and it's and because your views and beliefs don't align with what other people believe this is what i normally say if you see content that you do, that does not resonate with you it's okay to just scroll and pass there is absolutely no need to go on there and drop your long paragraphs about how you feel about this thing it's just it's don't 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 hate on somebody's craft that's what came out of their mind and just allow them to be unless of course it is something that's um, extremely unacceptable, in which case, yes, by all means, you should be called out on what you're doing or saying. Um, I think the other one I would say is we don't get paid enough for our time or maybe not everybody gets paid enough for their time because everybody is so busy undercutting everyone, as is the case with most businesses that are oversaturated. Um, I feel like there needs to be some kind of industry standard that allows people to get paid for their time and creativity such that we have something that we're aspiring to do so that when you do get to a certain number of followers or a certain number of reach then there's the, your bottom line reflects that growth as well and you're not just growing in numbers right um i think the other one is it is not just standing in front of a camera talking and then putting it up editing is a lot of work um conception of the concept is a lot of work um shooting is a lot of work. If you knew how many hours go into that five minute video that you see, you would be deeply, deeply surprised, you know? Um, and I think the other one is just being supportive of each other. I appreciate how in most industries, people are very supportive of each other. And you know, you'll, 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 call, you'll call that person who's being very good at this thing. I always say collaborate. And the more you collaborate, the more you learn. I say follow more creatives because through that, you get to learn different crafts, new ways to shoot, new ideas to come up with. Um, I don't think copying is a bad thing. I think it's a compliment. Some, when someone goes, oh, but you're doing exactly what I did. The fact that somebody else thinks that what you did is so cool that they're doing it too, I think that's a compliment, you know? And um, the other one I would say is, when you see somebody doing a paid partnership, don't just assume it's an ad and pass. The only way that creative will get paid, and that is their business, is when you like, comment, or just, you know, say something, or try the product. And, and when you do try the product, drop a comment and say, I did try the product, and this is what I think, you know? Um, I think it's just about, it's, it's hard because sometimes the support is definitely not there. Um, and then, or just being pegged against other creatives, when every creative, I, your unique superpower is nobody can be you, and nobody knows what's in your head, and nobody can ever execute the idea that you have in your head right so even if people are doing similar things there's no need to peg them against each other enjoy the content the content is there to be enjoyed nobody goes on to shows and say ah but all these serial killers are doing the same thing just you know, <laughs> you know what i mean you you you'll watch all the different shows and you'll be like i cannot believe this person did this terrible example but i mean i'm just people will end up doing the same thing